Welcome back. In this section, we will discuss how human activities and sheep grazing practices have changed in Iceland throughout history. It is important to keep in mind that humans and sheep are not native to Iceland. Human settlement in Iceland, Landnau in Icelandic, only happened a bit over a thousand years ago, in the 9th century. The first settlers brought with them sheep and other livestock. Before that, there were no humans and no large herbivores in Iceland, so vegetation had developed since the last glaciation without the influence of large herbivores. Large herbivores can have large impacts on ecosystems. In high numbers, large herbivores can disrupt vegetation cover by consuming plants and trampling, which causes plant damage and soil compaction. The disruption of vegetation cover opens bare ground patches which is particularly problematic in Iceland because its soils are very vulnerable to wind and water erosion. But how can we know how Iceland looked like before the introduction of sheep? Egil Erlinson, professor at the University of Iceland, uses a very interesting approach to address these questions. To reconstruct past environmental processes, we use sediment cores from peatlands and lakes as sediments accumulate, they become characterized by the environment in which they were formed. Through different proxies, we can analyze changes in the environment over time. Pollen and spores can inform about how plant communities have changed, and sedimentary proxies can be used to reflect changes in landscape stability. This is what we call the paleo-environmental record. We typically use layers of volcanic ash, or tephra layers, to identify the time when changes take place. Luckily enough for us researchers, two large eruptions in southern Iceland took place almost at the same time as the human settlement, the Landnam. The eruptions deposited a tephra layer over almost the whole country. The layer, which is usually called the Landnam tephra, provides a marker horizon showing where, in the stratigraphy, humans arrived. One example of pollen data that we have been studying comes from the Viking Age farm of Riesbrú in Mosfellsdalur in southwest Iceland. We can see that before the settlement, the pollen of mountain birch is quite dominant. This reflects the wooded and stable environment of the lowland before the settlement. The reduction of birch pollen around the time of settlement shows how land was cleared to make space for farming. Increases in pollen from grasses and several weeds show the emergence of an altered plant community. The onset of grazing is indicated here by the spores of Coprophilus fungi, which require herbivore droppings for germination. The environmental change shown here preceded the cooling episode of the Little Ice Age, which began around the middle of the 13th century. As a result, land use must be considered to be the primary driver behind this process. This is only one example, but this is the pattern shown by most Icelandic pollen studies. Even though the spatial and temporal patterning of woodland retreat and landscape destabilization can be complex, and the underlying causes difficult to disentangle, the paleo-environmental record shows that long-term unsustainable pastoralism has played a key role in the degradation of the Icelandic environment. From the paleo-environmental record, we can infer what landscapes looked like in the past before humans and sheep arrived to Iceland. By looking at changes before and after human settlement, we can assess the influence of humans and past land uses in shaping the ecosystems we see today. After settlement, the history of land use and grazing practices is documented in different ways, in historical documents, for example. The old Icelandic sagas were written mainly in the 13th century, but they refer to events happening mostly during the 10th and 11th centuries. 
The sagas report extensive clearing, burning, and cutting for fuel that reduce the extent of birch woodlands after settlement. In this way, we can use additional sources of information to try to reconstruct the dynamics of these past changes. But before going into that, in the next section, we will focus on the landscapes of Iceland before the arrival of humans. We will use a simple modeling approach to describe changes in the landscape and the drivers of these changes.